right club. Be the right club today. Yeah. Johnny, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different? Ladies and gentlemen, the winter meetings are over. The cliques have made their move. We assume the cliques have made their move. Uh, we are going live. John Rom is off to live. Solly here. Uh, Pie Man dressed to the nines. How are you, Pie Man? Good evening. Greetings, guys. Good to be with you uh, on this fine evening, uh, December seventh, the day that that may live in infamy. Uh, and uh, good, good, good to be with you guys. Don't uh, get canceled, like <laughs> like uh, Sean McDermott. <laughs> TC is here. Hello, TC. Hello. You know, I thought we were going to get all our fireworks this morning after those two blockbuster trades that went down with Bubba completely turning over the range goats but here we are another one that you know we've been prognosticating for a while so i'm excited to break it down with you guys kvv is here hello kevin good evening so i'm just here to apologize for whatever role my rom impression may have played in this uh <laughs> feel like you know it was all in good fun we were having a great time during the the phoenix open and all that but uh if i contributed this anyway i'd like to apologize for our constituency uh, listen, I was not expecting to do a, uh, a live show this time of year because we are deep into fall and approaching the holiday season. Roback is ready. Uh, this is a first I'm wearing a Roback hoodie underneath a Letterman jacket, which I had to go find my, uh, my wife's old, uh, university of Florida Letterman jacket, which of course, if you're listening to go, so the that's pod, a letter woman jacket. Exactly. Mm, letter uh, person's jacket. uh, yeah. It's really slimming on you. It's yeah, it was great. I kind of like it. Yeah. I was, I was going to get ready to take it off, but I'm going to keep it on. Uh, Roback is fresh off new restocks of our favorite polos, hoodies, and Q-zips. Trust us when we say there's not a better fit for gear for uh, the remainder of fall golf. The fit, the feel, the quality, it's all perfect. They just released brand new performance crews. They are soft and comfortable, breathable, lightweight fabric fabric that also has perfect stretch. They're great for the course or a night out. He shook. What he do shook. I need to tell you? What do I need to tell you about the, uh, the performance hoodies? Legit, the only hoodies we wear. The fabric is soft. We cannot take them off. And now you can pair these bad boys uh, with the new Roback five pocket pant. Let us tell you right now some of the best pants we have ever worn. Now it's the holiday season. Load up on some Roback both for yourself and for others. Use code NLU on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order through the end of this week. That's R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, 20% off. Bottoms, Q-zips, hoodies, and more with code NLU. Get ready for the holiday season with Roback. Can I take the jacket off now? Or are we Please. done with that bit? Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. thank you. Are you going to rock it the whole the whole night, Deech? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. My office is cold as hell, so it, I, okay. it actually feels kind of nice. Deech, we'll what does it say? What does yours say? Uh, it's Genoa Kingston High School. That's hmm. GK. Uh, My letter, letterman jacket is back in Montana for for all those yeah. asking. I see some people in the chat being like, "Oh, where's the where's the loser college athlete?" No, no, it's, it's <laughs> back in my it's growing mothballs in my parents' closet. Did you get one for for college football as well? You know, they didn't. I did not get a. I I, I only played in like two college games, TC. So I'm not sure I would have even qualified for a letter if they gave those out. Uh, a lot of a lot of practice time though. A lot of getting my face kicked in by future NFL linemen. Can we get to the story of the day? Um, mm -hmm. You know, the reaction to the rollback, of course, is what we want to cover on tonight's show. Um, yeah. Just, you know, just want to kind of go maybe rehash a couple topics from that show last night that we did. But Kevin, I don't know if you're going to be with us the whole night. So I'll start with you. What's your what's your reaction to uh, this total shock of a move? John Rom to live. We did not see this coming. Yeah. You know, I surveyed some of my friends who are not in our golf media space uh, recently. I was like, say, how do you feel kind of about the state of pro golf at the moment? And two, uh, just like one after another, they were all like, I'm so f like infuriated by all of it. Like, I don't even really choosing sides in this moment. I just am exhausted by all this crap. And I feel like that was a, a pretty good temperature taking of the state of like people who don't follow this, like quite as religiously as we do. Like, it's just exhausting. And I think that the sort of between this and the literally the rollback stuff, the fan is kind of getting fucked over in a lot of ways. And I, I just, I'm just kind of like trying to understand that perspective of 
man, if you don't really like give a crap about the live, you know, PGA tour war, and you just want to play your golf every weekend and you would like to watch more golf than you could, but the commercials are always bogging you down. It's kind of a miserable week for you. You know, you see in stories about how PJ tour can't afford its purses and they don't really <laughs> have a great plan for what's going forward. And they just lost arguably their best player. And you know, what are you going to do? Like as a golf fan, are you going to actually like, all right, well, I'll just tune in anyway. Guess what? You might not, you might just be like, you know what? I'll catch it. The majors and that's it. And what if golf is on a path towards becoming tennis where we really don't care about anything, but the majors and maybe even less than we used to. That's my, I guess, kind of downer of a moment is like, I don't really blame John Rom for any of this. Like if I were John Rom, I wouldn't have taken the money. Cause I, I feel like, it's a principled sort of stand for me and I would not have done this, but I don't blame him because I feel like TC, you could, you kind of feel this too. Like the leadership is so fucking terrible within like the PJ tour at this moment that why would you trust one entity over the another? Might as well get paid. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the, like, it's like, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you know, like, am I, am I surprised that, that a big player left? No. Am I surprised that, you know, going back three months or six months or whatever, am I surprised it was Rom? A little bit. Yeah, based on some of the things he said and some of... Some know, of the things I, he said. <laughs> yeah, but again, some of, you very know, clearly. a lot of it's after June 6th as well when Monaghan drove a bus over his credibility and his trust and everything. That's my big takeaway is like, where's Jay Monaghan? Where's... Like who's who's driving the bus at the tour? It's crazy. There's no there's no leadership whatsoever. We've been saying that for three years. We've been saying that even before all the live stuff started. We were saying that in 2019, early 2020. It's crazy. I I feel like today I can't tell if uh, first of all when we I mean we found out Ron was going. This is a couple of weeks ago now at this point, and I was stunned myself at my lack of emotional reaction to it I, it was kind of a an inward look of like i've kind of bottomed out here like i don't i can't go any look sir i can't pull over any farther like this is, I, I bottomed out here as a golf fan and i think i i did a dead cat dead cat bounce off the bottom today it was kind of like started to picture like all right this is like all right one by one we started picking apart a lot of the things that have kind of fallen apart in the golf world probably four or five maybe six years ago even of like hey Guys, this part here doesn't make sense, right? And then something new comes along, like, well, hey, that doesn't make sense. Why are purses going up? Like, their the ratings aren't going up. And why are there two golf leagues? There's barely enough attention on one. And they're just layered all of this dumb shit on top of each other that makes no sense. And I feel like today was a tipping point of like, all right, what? It's a huge loss for the PGA Tour. It's a huge win for Piff. Like, I, I don't believe this is a huge win for Liv. If, Dustin Johnson and Bryson and Brooks Kepka and Cameron Smith and all those didn't make people watch. I don't think Rahm is going to do it, right? I think, you know, all those guys are, uh, Phil Mickelson included, those guys are all needle movers kind of in the same vein that Rahm is. Rahm is obviously the top player that has done this and uh, a totally different shift in that regard. But it just is like a total like, all right, now we're in the dumbest possible phase of all of this. There's nothing left to save on the PGA Tour. The mules are, you know, staging a coup and like there's no leadership at the top. There's no, you know, there's a supposed negotiation going on between Piff and the PGA Tour. And like this has to be the thing that brings things together, right? Because no one is winning currently. Like the, uh, you know, Piff is just losing less. Like, and they have more ammo and they have everything to withstand all of this. So I don't know. I, it, we can work our way into that, but I do feel like this is, this can funny. be a good thing. That's like, Liv, TC. Liv sold like 500 tickets. To their, to their Miami event, five hundred. <clears throat> there, there's okay. I'm, I'm of a couple different minds here today. I think I'm sorry. I'm I'm with you in that. I if you had told me six months ago, like, hey, John Rom's gonna go to live. I think I would have had a much more emotional, like, eulogizing the PGA Tour type of reaction. I do want to just underline underscore the jacket was pretty warm by the way so i had to take that off but just <laughs> i feel like for a podcast that really made its bones laughing at the absurdity of pro golf laughing at some of these moments i think we gotta just linger a little longer on john rom on fox news in a letterman jacket <laughs> announcing that he's going to, brett bear. to live with brett bear is just 
maybe the ultimate with, like who gives a fuck man like this is like look at what we're debating here what are we trying to what are we trying to save like who cares and, and kbb that's where i'm kind of with your your friends you were talking about earlier is much like we were talking about with the rollback stuff is like if you like me and like i think all of us on here if you want to spend 50 60 hours a week on this stuff keeping up on all the game theory keeping up on all the different things and all the different levers and machinations of what's going on i I can get to like where i actually think this is probably a good day for golf fans and i'll get to that in a second uh but if i'm just a casual fan i'm not reading the distance insights report i'm not following where like all the how rom affects the negotiations between piff and you know, all these private equity groups and the PGA tour and new co and all of these things, like who gives a fuck, man. That's, that's exactly where I'm at is if I was a normal human being person, I would say, guys, I'll see you on April 11th or whatever. Have fun. This looks like you're doing great. I'm going to go watch basketball or, you know, read a book or get ready for spring training. Like, fuck this. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pause there, I guess, for, (laughs) for your reaction. Oh, I think that's that's pretty accurate. I I I um I I do want to pause on this a little bit. I feel like even myself probably giving Rom a, a bit of a pass on all of this in terms of like I, again I I talked about this last weekend uh, when we we I mean we knew this was coming and we kind of did that show as if Rom was going to leave. But man, I just I tend to take these guys at their word, right? When you say one thing, I'm like I, I don't even remember if I said this on the show Sunday, but. After so, this is after June 6. This is at the U.S. Open at LACC. We're walking the eighth fairway, and I'm walking with Rom and Sergio. And Rom like kind of pulled me aside as I was kind of like sniffing around as to like what's going on with this live stuff. And he was like, almost like pulled me aside and like stop asking me about whether or not I'm going to live. Like I don't like the format, man. Like I told gave you, me, I don't like the format. Give me the Nick Saban. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not going asking. to so quit asking. But it was like very direct. I, I didn't even like commit the whole conversation to memory because it was so much like okay, like I. I all right, let's move on to the other guy that maybe we're worried about jumping or whatever it might be. Um, and he was just so adamant about it. So on that level, it's like, dude, it's just kind of just so freaking otherworldly and bizarre to see him on Fox News with Brett Bayer. Uh, just my day held hostage. This was supposed to happen at 11. There was something that was supposed to happen at 3 and then 4.45. And it doesn't come on until 6 or what, 6.30, whatever it was. Uh, it's just it's very surreal for someone that said, I don't like the format. 54 holes is not a golf tournament uh, to now be like, oh, yeah, this is I'm excited to go grow the game. I can't believe he went for grow the game. Like of all things, even man. even even better than that, what I would take the the most issue with, which, again, you, you don't I think we've said this a lot. Like you, you don't get to take the half a billion dollars and like look cool and like demand respect <laughs> for what you're saying it. like fuck off man like you, you get the money that's the trade-off that congratulations what you this don't picture. get to do is is go on and say like after you've spent two years two and a half years just farting in the general direction of how laughable this entire league is you don't then get to come on and say like i mean they've just grown They've they've just grown everything so much that I had to join the game. I just I had to join. They've just they've shown so much growth is where it it gets to like, dude, get get out of here. But I think and and innovation. One of my biggest one of the biggest bummers for me is like Rom is such an eloquent, interesting thinker who sort of prided himself on always being able to sort of give you some version of the truth. And if that gets like sanded down and kind of neuterized that's going to be such a bummer for me. Like, you know, look, the majors matter way more than anything else. Right. And so we're going to tune into the majors regardless. And I'm not going to like hate John Rom. Like I have plenty of good conversation with Brooks Kepka in the sort of time since he left to live. But if, if Rom is like pushing the party line of like, this is the way, and this is so cool. And you know, the, the team stuff is so matters so much to me. And I, I just knew that this was the future of golf. That's going to be kind of a bummer to me because I think John was just so much more authentic than that. And I, I can't really stomach listening to that stuff. <laughs> well, like the, the hardest part being when he literally said, like, you know, Kelly and I have talked and we said, would $400 million change our lives? Like, that's what he said at the U.S. Open last year, right? And uh, today he says, but as a husband and as a father and as a family man, I have a duty to my family to give them the best opportunities and the most amount of resources possible. Like, dude, that is literally the exact opposite of what you said. Or, like, you valued your way of life 
more than $400 million a year and a half ago. And now it's your duty to give them the most amount of resources possible. That is the highest level of selling out you could possibly do. Putting it, it on the wife too. Putting yeah. it on the family, <laughs> putting it on somebody else. Which is, I don't want to, man. You got to, you know, got to. I felt this was monkey. important to them. Yeah, yeah. you know, you got to, got to pay the bills. <laughs> Guilty is just more expensive than it used to be. That's right. <laughs> right? Inflation, with, with inflation under this yeah. administration. All right. Like, do you guys on. think Brett Bear? do you think the 6 p.m. window with Brett Bear was, was like like power rank these for me 6 p.m with brett bear 7 p.m with laura ingraham with mm. the ingraham angle uh with an angles there <laughs> ingram uh, with an angle ingram. <laughs> i think it's ingram <laughs> uh you learned it by reading at eight or hannity at nine i feel like they should have saved it for hannity at nine yeah just really hit us during prime guys time. I got a hint to Bayer, man. He he was asking like yeah, all the questions good. I would want to ask. Like, hey, dude, like you said this thing, and yeah. it was that was uh, what I was anticipating the most. It was like trying to watch Brom <laughs> squirm right out of like, dude, like you said these things directly, man. I mean, I, I'd put you up there with. I don't know if there's five other guys that have been more like clearly spoken on their intentions on this thing and the weirdest. Uh, like obviously, if Rory flipped, that would be the weirdest of all of them. But like Rom is in the top five of dudes. It's like I don't know how you back out of the things you've said. Do you want to get into that? Because I think there's a lot of reasons why it happened. And it's not just like, I don't think they handed him a $600 million check. Which that's, right? like, yeah, that's, I, I think, think that's much very more overblown of like how much money though. he's getting and how, like, I'd love to see this contract, how many clauses and opt outs and so how much I, of that, I, you know, money was quote unquote equity in something that may not exist in 18 months. Right. Exactly. And that's where Kev, I think if I was making an impassioned case, I don't know why, I would have the brain sickness to do this. But if I was making a case to your text friends, this is where I would say, like, I, I think this probably exacerbates the two sides coming together more than anything. Well, I, I think stretch that out though. Like, okay. where, why so, does that happen? Let's start at the beginning, right? So June 6th, I, everybody, every time I want to say June 6th. <laughs> it's so uh, frustrating that it's a six, right? Like, couldn't that shit have happened and, on an eighth or a 12th or something? This had happened why yesterday. They didn't yesterday. Exactly. December 6th. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, okay, so June sixth, Jay Monahan, Yasser are on CNBC. They announced that the you know the the war is over. We're coming together. We've got a framework agreement to merge these two great organizations, the PJ Tour and Live. Uh, we're all gonna you know, work for the rest of the year to live in harmony, right? And you guys stop me if you want to if you want to linger on any of these topics. Players, uh, understandably, get very, very pissed about this. They had no idea that this was coming. Uh, a lot of the board members, like a lot of the players, particularly on the board, I think, get pissed and bring in Tiger Woods. I think you can tell his feelings on Liv and this whole situation. It sounds from from the sounds of it, it sounds like, you know, the, the big push from there is, you know, we're getting now we're getting outreach from all these private equity groups saying, you know, if friends you, of golf. Well, friends of golf things of that nature uh hey if you were going to accept a bid why did you not accept a bid from all of us so that whole framework agreement that originally started with the pj tour and piff has by all accounts and by all reports i think this is all like pretty public has now been watered down by a number of different you know bids and people trying to get a, a slice of this new co pj and, tour enterprises and doj scrutiny Right. And come out and just said, like, yeah. hey, none of this you can do. Like, I don't know what you guys or push out completely. Can. Like, right. Not just watered down. Like the other option is just not working with them at all. And and, you know, so people can say, oh, you know, Yasser's operating in bad faith here. Well, I think that Jay's probably been operating in bad faith, too. So, <laughs> well, I think one thing on the DOJ stuff, I think a question that a lot of people had today is like, what happened to the, you know, the no poaching of players? thing that was in the framework agreement i don't know if that was announced as something that was dropped because of doj scrutiny or not yeah. or if that was just yeah so i think that's why that was dropped so let's just say that you are the pitch. which if we can if we can pause on that for just a second that to me was like all right well either they're going to work towards a deal or they're going to start poaching players immediately right like what what is the intent of both of these parties and to me a story was told from it being four to five months from that point on and no players poached from from the PIF, like of the PGA Tour, right? That's to say, like, again, if we're looking for the end game of of what PIF and and live whatever that is wants out of it, it's they want to deal with the PGA Tour. They want all the things we talked about several months ago, right? And 
the fact that they hadn't poached anyone tells that part of the story as well. When they had every right to, they could have easily done it, especially after the betrayal of so many players on June 6th. They probably, you know, had some fired up players that would have taken cash in a heartbeat, and they did not. That did not happen, right? So I think that's an important part of the story in my mind. Totally agree. I think if it was a complete land grab, they would have tried to grab more land, right? right. They they were kind of waiting in the wings, which I, I'm with you, signals to me like, okay, they're they're sincerely trying to get this deal done. And I don't think that's like a stretch to understand why, right? Like there's a lot of people I saw in mentions today that are like, why would they need to have this big negotiating chip if they just got John Rom? Why would they still want to why would they still want to merge? It's like, well, because they don't have any fucking revenue or TV ratings, man. Like, what is what is the future of that league? Like they still are trying to destabilize it enough to get in the door and and get a piece of it, right? And so well, and in that like in the meantime there, the tour got eyes for other private equity for other sources right. of funding. And Liv says, all right, like we're losing our leverage here too, especially now that the that the litigation's dropped. And so they said, All right, you know what? Like we're not some also ran over here. We're we're gonna get back to the to the bargaining table and create some urgency here. And that's exactly what they've done. And then some I think that's the biggest untold story in all this, TC is like they thought Liv thought that maybe their advantages were slipping away. And they were like, Guess what? We still have a few cards to play. These yep. this was Phil's chess moves 28 through 36 like <laughs> guess you what you hand it to him man do you know. think that rom might still be interested in this stuff and I, what a huge miscalculation by the tour or not even this the tour but like the guys who are trying to figure out how to merge these two things whether it was tiger and you know rory and cantley and or all these guys whether it was aj and ed if they thought they could sort of make this thing fit it together and figure out uh you know equity and all this stuff and all of a sudden push out live man what a big whiff on their part because uh now they kind of have to do a deal or they're totally screwed two things on this one i think the i don't obviously have no idea what the actual ebbs and flows of the negotiation are but from what i've gathered the also including a another investor alongside piff is a, a an approach that could potentially minimize scrutiny from the DOJ, right? If if PIF is a minority investor, instead of coming in and investing at an outrageous market rate to, you know, some of the, all the concerns that were brought up in the Senate hearing this summer from Stolen Valor, Richard Blumenthal, uh, <laughs> about like the sodification of sports, like in theory, if there's a market set by private equity investment and the Saudis come in and invest at a certain percent, like that's a more palatable uh i guess situation for the doj that's that's a theory here and so, that's good to, no totally agree so i was gonna say let me just finish underlining this point of like why rom why now right is if if you're rom again gestures wildly at all the quotes we just referenced at everything he's ever said about live i just got to think like i'm i'm still you know put the clown makeup on if you want like i i'm still giving the benefit of the doubt that he's a serious player who wants to play serious golf. Right. And I, I just am left with the fact that the only reason he would go is if he thinks that a deal is not only imminent between the two organizations, but also it might like happen even faster if you do go right. Because this is, as you were saying, Kev, it kind of like forces the hand of the PJ tour where it becomes like, all right, man, if you if you don't want to let us in on this deal, if we can't get something worked out, we're just going to keep taking guys. Here's what it looks like. Boom. Another one. You want to yeah. you want to see another one? Boom. There's another like, one. Jay, you don't think we're serious? Cool. Like, here's a reminder. Yeah. And so if you're wrong and you can see the chessboard here, it, it really feels like that's the situation, right? Is like, OK, I it's it's I said on Twitter today, it's almost like the best get rich quick scheme in the history of the world where you kind of like. What's the worst case scenario for Rom here is like maybe he plays a year on live while the two organizations are talking about how they're going to come together and how they're going to reintegrate players and all that stuff. And meanwhile, he gets a massive check, which TC, to your point, I think if we're looking at all the old live contracts. I mean, they're like normal sports, right? Like they're all they don't just show up and hand you like a big. I think the old know, ones were like in deck. thirds. The old ones were like, you know, uh, at signing within hit the first shot and then the remainder yeah. over. And, and then the years. remainder, at, you know, three years later or whatever. But yeah. So let's I say, think, I mean, there, yeah. there were a lot of reports out there about, you know, whether it's half cash and half equity or what, what like, I, again, I don't think this all adds up to like $600 million in cash. I think it's probably 
much closer to, you know, let's say half cash and half equity. And even that cash is then spread out over a number of years. So let's call it, let's say it's $50 million a year, something like that. And you're John Rahm. It's like, man, you get $50 million and you're back on the PJ tour in yeah. eight months. You're like it's one like, of the highest paid athletes in the world for 2024. So, yeah. so part of that too is like, you know, Rory's already said like, Hey, we have to change the rules for the Ryder cup. He's going to play. On the Ryder. So you're not going to miss a Ryder cup. Rom's already said, Hey, maybe they'll let me play in PGA tour events, which I assume the reason that they wouldn't do that is because it would probably. Well, can we, to make, yeah. can we pause for one second? Just to say like, in, in theory, this whole thing is going to be settled in like, uh, what's the, the today's the seventh in like 20 by within 24 days. Right, like the deadline is to get this done before the well, end of they, the year. I mean, right? yeah, they could also push Maybe. the deadline. They can, but like it, it's like I, th I think this is Liv putting the foot down and being like, no, I think a hundred percent. I'm saying exactly like this, it's it time is. to do this deal. Like it's time, yeah. whatever this is going to be, it's time to do this deal. And they have all the leverage. And uh, yeah, we talked about that on Sunday. Like that was yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, but it, it so it, if we're talking about we could have a Jan like. Rom could be playing the PGA Tour in January and February and then still start his live season, right? I mean, in theory, like if this gets worked out in between now and then, and that's where the PGA Tour has has nothing to fight back with at this point. I mean, and they and a bunch of risk of hey, if like if we keep going down this, then we're no longer the the leading golf tour in the world or we don't have the requisite number of OWGR, you know, top players or whatever where you know, I feel like NBC and CBS, like they could negate some of the media rights deals as well, you know, which, yeah, that's that's the other fun, quote unquote, uh, part to tease out about this is let's say that the tour doesn't get a deal or let's say that, you know, if there's players that are trying to cut the piff out or there's players that are trying to go with another bid or like who knows what's going on behind the scenes with all the player directors on the board. But if the tour, for whatever reason, doesn't get a deal down now, all of a sudden it's like if you are a play a top player and you see John Rom go to live for X amount of money and you see the tour in absolute chaos, you see the mules just looting storefronts for FedEx cup points, <laughs> rioting in the rioting in the streets. <laughs> like now the I mean live is almost like you know, I mean, not almost, they're definitely in a better position to both negotiate with the tour and a far better position if the deal falls apart. So it's like truly you gotta hand it to him like yeah jujitsu chess move pulling down of the, the pj tour's pants on, on the with, entire with, thing. with all of the artillery right i mean like well, sure. it, it's sure it, none yeah of but they've also like all the money. friendly <laughs> fired themselves like yeah totally i mean obviously <laughs> okay. but like i mean I, like we've been shouting or i've been shouting from the rooftops for three years that monahan like he's, he's getting outflanked and outmaneuvered at every turn all he had to do was pick up the fucking phone three years ago and, and have a have an off the record behind closed doors conversation even, and he wouldn't even do that. I look. It'd be I'm harder to play like it worse for the PGA Tour has played it. Like I, I'm not going to pretend like I I knew all the things along the way, and that I wouldn't have made some of the same mistakes. But will history <laughs> look at Jay as like one of the worst? <laughs> Commissioners Sorry, of all TC's time. hoodies on inside out. <laughs> I saw the comment. I just saw him realize it. Uh, <laughs> that subtle dog logo is on the wrong side. The subtle dog logo is on my yeah. right side. I was like, "Oh, this is crazy." TC looks like he you just know, got my, back my... from the front, putting the kids down tonight. He looked like he was totally worn out. I played golf with Spencer passed. Levine today. It was, wow. it was awesome. We buried the leading story. Things are happening. What are you saying, Kev? Were you saying, Kev? I just think it will history look back if the PGA tour like kind of goes under or are is dramatically so different. Will will history look at Jay as like one of the, you know, complete follies as a commissioner in any sport in history. He's like Larry like, Scott. The, I don't the, look, the I wouldn't have necessarily, I, I certainly have made my qualms about live and where the money comes from. But in the end, we're reaching a point where in retrospect, if Jay picks up the phone and says, yeah, yeah, we'll take your money. Like, Things are dramatically or different. Twenty percent of the of the organization, yeah. or whatever. I mean, truly, yeah, I, like I, you know, I, Yasser seems to be pause, like, I just want to be involved in this shit. Not the only like, pause I want a on this Kev, is just yeah. like a reminder of going back to that time period when 
like the Khashoggi stuff was very recent, right? Yeah. And it was yeah. extremely unpalatable. Uh, it's still unpalatable. And totally. as, as time goes on, people, I, I never heard the word sports washing today just because we've gotten so used to this shit. And that's exactly how it works. They've, they've washed it. It's clean now. I think it, I, I do not think this has gone well. I do not think they've made the right decisions clearly, like very clearly. I do think it's just a teeny bit of revisionist history to just like, to point, okay. to go back in time and be like, they should just take the money up front. Like, Again, I don't think that that would have been coming from a good faith. No, but even but room. even but like having a having conversation, conversation with PGL even or like when, before Saudi's even involved, sure. right? I think so, Sully. When when the KBV and Sully of the future go back and like do a recap of like do it's a breakdown of this era, are they going to look at it like, <laughs> oh well, you know, it was kind of understandable, or is it going to be like, dude, man, yeah. should taking the money, like yeah, they, they're. Sure. I hope that we, you know, we get a little bit more nuance and credit, but I also know like when we're doing some of these looks backs at like the 1992 Ryder cup, like the, the mistakes seem obvious. Yeah. In retrospect. <laughs> yes. Yes. They, there's not a lot of like, well, you know, Phil just wasn't playing that well. And I'm so super confident to listen back to a lot of our, a lot of what we've said. Like when, like when, when Jay, I wouldn't encourage the 11 to do families that. or, <laughs> <laughs> you know different stuff I'm, it's like yo like this was stupid like saying it day of this was stupid or that was stupid like it's just at every turn it seems like there's a decision tree and he takes the wrong thing but dj back to your point of like i think that this could be a seminal day in that it, like it's the day that everything started moving back together because it can't get any worse for the tour their backs are up against the wall who knows what happens with the dp world tour maybe they get back in the mix here maybe that's a global tour like that's that's my goal of all this is like man you know what would be freaking cool is like if they really do want to grow the game and be serious about that then like let's then let's just eradicate the mules like you know lop off humane, humanely yeah 25 to 30 you know <laughs> pga tour events put those fold those into the corn fairy tour or whatever and then basically have a worldwide series of 20 25 events with the top 75 100 players in the world and that's, and that's where, where I, that's where ahead. i started getting excited today right it was like just just look around dude i mean yeah. mm -hmm. just looking at the already depleted pga tour the mule they can't even figure out what's remaining like the message still hasn't gotten through to the mules who still hold way too much power like again you just would never set up the pga tour to look like that you would definitely never set it up to lose a bunch of your top talent to money that you cannot compete with just on any front john rom's overall contract is more than an entire year's purse on the pga tour like they just they're not going to win that race television products unwatchable you are you've up the purses so much it don't make any sense that you can't pay your bills you're going to your sponsors that are seeing this this product go to shit and be like you guys kind of make up the windfall on that because they can say no we absolutely do not, do not need to do that and you have live who still nobody is watching right despite spending billions and billions of dollars truly the worst cpm rate like dollars spent per viewer investments of in sports history i think it's fair to say they're not winning right that they're it everyone is losing so badly that the only solution is to get together and figure out a new way to structure professional golf it's not gonna look at the pga tour pga tour is not gonna win i don't know if pitt's gonna win i don't know if the game of golf is gonna win i don't know what's gonna happen it cannot be worse than this and it is torn down to the studs so so in such a raw fashion that the only way it can go is up from here do i think they'll nail everything no but like i think we end up with some sort of star driven global tour live and pga tour players back together again uh and i think the pga tour and the dp world tour are feeding those tours like that's burn it, it down sense. baby just burn it. we're done like at this so, point it's not worth saving burn there's it a down. Couple, i think the the mules have no idea what's coming like i think they're in like if you're a fringe player you are in real trouble of being going able to, to play Wichita, golf for homie. And living. You are. You are going to be grinding it out on what is the it's equivalent of or coming over the, the old Nike They're tour, all, the Hogan tour. You are sharing hotel rooms and cars. Like you, your life is about to get brutal <laughs> because the value that you provide is not going to be worth shit. It's just oh. not. I and I, I wish that like Rom might look, be the mule skinner. Stroud <laughs> Neil said he Rom wanted truly mule might be the mule skinner to emerge. This Chris Stroud it. talking about how we need a union, whatever this week. Like, I don't think I've ever heard a professional athlete as clueless as that in that statement. It, because to have a union, you have to convince the actual players who are worth a shit ton of value to join you in their fight and to see that you 
have to be picked up in the sort of larger, you know, wave of like value, right? I think management and has to feel a threat. Man, yes. <laughs> they have to feel like, okay, you're an essential part of this. We should band together. We're more powerful together than we are separate. That could not be less true. In They're already golf. cutting you out of the tournaments. Like yes. they don't need and, your labor. <laughs> and so like, I'm sorry, like you guys should have pushed so hard for whatever formats were keeping you involved in this, but you're, you're in trouble. Like I, I and I hate that for some of the people who we, like and are friendly with or whatever but man like none of this shit is going to work out well for the fringe players it's just not i can't oh, believe it, my hoodie's on backwards it's <laughs> the best. it looks good it's, it, you know like the one thing i'll say to that though kev is like the one thing the pga tour has done an amazing job of over many 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 years is like stand-up golf tournaments getting people to come getting people to buy hospitality and, and just watch golfers i mean a lot of these fields are crap totally and i get that they're subsidized by top players like i the, the model for running golf tournaments exists all over the world. There's a Sunshine Tour. There's an Asian Tour. There's a DP World Tour. There's an LPGA Tour. There's an LET. Like, there's going to be golf tournaments to play in, and it's going to be if uh, it's not going. Nate, last year you're not going to make three million bucks a year. Like you're you're not going to, but like you can still do it's fine. It's not total total doomsday. It you definitely don't realize how good you've got it because it's going to definitely get worse in that scenario of how I picture this kind of coming back together. But I don't know how they do it because I. Would not be taking our our company's money and signing up to to you know sponsor some of these tournaments, but these tours find a way to get people to pay and and uh, and get people paid to play. We golf. shit on the tour a lot. The tour is really good at at selling dog shit and getting people and getting people to buy it. I think know, they're so. up against the limit though. They've they've taken yeah. it as far as they can for years. The moment, the institutional momentum has just like oh it's on TV. Oh it's coming to my town. Oh I want to see pro golf like. Of course, I'll just go along with it. And I think that's going to go away. I think if I'm a big, uh, like big brand golf sponsor who's trying to do a lot of business at golf tournaments, I'm sprinting to the USGA, the RNA, the PGA of America, and trying to get a deal done with one of the major championships before those prices go 10x over the next. 10 God, years they're gonna have so many commercials on those events now <laughs> you know what i mean like those are yeah. like we, we've been saying this uh, and this is where tc I, I will ride hard with you is longtime listeners of this podcast i think we'll hear a familiar refrain of yo this shit's not working man you're just making the majors better you're just making the majors better the things yeah. are just separating 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 and again maybe this rom thing does empower some of what you guys are talking about and we we find a world tour or we find like some more watchable more like just interesting product that has to drive more value and has to you know bring in the kind of money that all these people are expecting to see uh but until that happens like it's just going to be the majors and everything else. And th th those two have never been farther apart, getting farther. Agree. And and speaking of majors, I mean, shit, I'm sure the Augusta guys aren't super thrilled that their reigning champion just leveraged his green jacket for low key. Kind a lot figures. of A lot of Masters champions. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't. If you're a Masters winner, Glib was a great deal, right? You Rom, yeah. Does Rom go if he doesn't win the Masters? Like, I don't know. I mean, that's, that was the one kind of guarantee of like, ah, I'm good, man. I, I can always be in this tournament no matter what this shakes out. It's a good thing Jordan won five of them so we didn't lose more people. Yeah. I mean, Phil may test this theory about whether you'll always be invited back. <laughs> um, can I give you guys Angel a Cabrera, is, by all accounts, is probably going to get invited back. That's I mean, you know, prison. He earned his ass in. He did his time, TC. <laughs> so um, paid so his, did my Uncle Juice. Paid his debt. That's right. I'm gonna uh, over under, and I don't know. I don't know when the I can't find it. Um, the 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 date of the last live event of 2024, whatever that is. Um, over under, is there a a live shot hit past? All right, it's September 22nd is what they have in there. Dallas, not official. Is there a live shot hit past the day of September 22nd? I say yes because I bet they try to fold it into some smaller series or like, hey, lives this you know, it still exists and these guys are going to be doing this or, you know, similar to like TGL, right. Of like, you know, which I, I think is equally dumb. Um, <laughs> the name I haven't heard in a while. Yes. I, I think, yes. I think they'll try to spin it back up in some way or keep it spinning. I don't That's know. What, I'm not sure. I think what, I like, what are you going to say? 
I say, or asked a different way, does this like restructuring of professional golf end up in like folding within live? Can, can I just say, listen, maybe there's all this genius game theory going on behind the scenes that I don't understand, but like if live is around for another 10 years, are you trading like the best player for arguably the worst player as we saw <laughs> today with Matt Wolf being traded for Taylor Gooch? Like I, I don't get again if like please <laughs> I, I, I would like to talk about that if, if there's some yeah, like if standard. there's some glowing brain theory going on or if bubba's gonna life coach him back to you know becoming one of the best players in the world and he thinks he's getting this immense value uh I, I would love to hear about that but what it really sounds like is just like ah listen man this is the last year let's just make this as palatable for everybody as possible i don't know i mean is it what if live is the tour though in like 10 years like what if we all fold into the net and live becomes like the main thing i i think I we're underestimating does, but... how much spieth and tiger and can't let or like yeah, or who knows can't let, but like yeah. spieth and tiger and some of these other guys like hate hate live <laughs> yeah i i think that there'll so, be some be clear, version Piff of is not going golf. away I see yeah, everyone yeah. in the comments live is not going away. Like Piff is the one that's not going away. Right. right? And there's going to be a deal almost certainly with the PGA tour and a private equity investor group and, and Piff like an NDB world tour. Like that's, that's almost certainly where we're headed or, uh, and so what does that look like? I do not think the PGA tour is going to fold as much as I think the Piff has the upper hand in the negotiations. I don't think the PGA tour is folding up into live. I don't think that's the, the final solution here. I don't think they're, that far pushed up against the wall. I might be underestimating that though. I want to, I want to shout out that Matt Matt Wolf gets on base comment too. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you just you gotta have my team. Oh I don't know, Brooks guys. Just doing a drive by on D Every, today. Everybody, multiple <laughs> drive bys. Brooks, Brooks, Brooks just, just does not give a fuck. It's <laughs> great. Yes. I mean, honestly, he and Rob very fair of point of like this is a dumb trade. Yeah. yeah. He and, I, but he and Rom sniping at each other would be fun if that was like a real thing, right? If their teams actually had some sort of rivalry, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's gonna what would possibly get me to watch live, but if like Brooks and Rom like were genuinely talking shit about each other, I, I might, might tune in, might fire up the CW and see it. Can I just from a, a big picture here? Let's put the sports washing stuff aside. You know, I, I, there's, there's let's put it in the dryer. Let's there's plenty of plenty of people who who will stand by that uh, for good reason. But if, like, can I just give you a little bit of optimism that like, let's say like the next year is going to suck. I think we know that that's it's going to be awful. Not for even a next, good major next count. Oh, my no. God. Rota, I would know? check out again. I would go to the national parks. I Take would some go next year. Rent an RV. You know, you do the Monty, just RV your way around the oh, US. I think because no, he goes you know, golf running, don't you did that in a BMW. Yeah, I think I think just get out, really, no really free invest, ads, invest in yourself, invest in yourself in 2024. Uh, can I just get a little bit of optimism that 2025, if you're telling me, let's say 70, like just going back to what you guys have said, let's say 70 player world tour, let's say we're getting Brooks and Bryson and Spieth and Rom and cam smith and scheffler and all these guys like back together on the same tour playing all over the world it's pretty it's a lot more captivating than it would have been five years ago because 100 percent. like I, I i think it has if the adults get in a room and figure this out and find it like and to be clear there's going to be a shitload of more bitching between now and that day like it's it's going to be shawshank redemption crawling through a mile long thing of shit uh come out the other side clean before before we end up with with, with uh we're gonna have nothing. to wash the sports all over again <laughs> <laughs> uh that's like that's that's what's gonna be but like again it can't definitely can't this can't continue do we all agree on that even like the people in the comments like you can't like pretend that this is going to continue no one again no one is winning here uh and it can't go back to the way it was so like how does this actually get resolved and there's gonna be some have to be some ego swallowing among some of the pga tour guys like yeah the live guys made out way better financially than we did and that's how it's gonna go um and, but like hey we this sport will eat itself like it will be toast it will not survive if they don't have a solution to this because it pro just golf makes no sense pro the golf. one thing yeah, pro though, golf, professional sorry that i would say to that is like boxing splintered and never came back together 
tennis is sort of splintered in a weird way and that hasn't really like it can the egos are so big and the money so sort of coming from so many different sources that it could just basically be like no nah, we just rather there's too much selfishness we'd rather have a shittier product and boxing has lived that life for 30 40 years where there's three different belts and nobody actually knows who's the heavyweight champion or middleweight champion and the point. like big fights are sort of like come and go no but there's no schedule to them uh, you know the majors are kind of the one still thing we have majors, is the majors but, though right yeah like that's that's the glue that's holding it all together yeah which is where yeah it feels much more like tennis right than boxing, the boxing. yeah I did see some of our live bot friends saying that the majors would be extinct soon if they didn't somehow take mm. if money or something. I, I there's some I don't know conspiracy theory that I can't even get around. So oh, is that if you if you don't let Taylor Gooch in? Then the, Apparently, yeah, the they would the, the majors would just dry up and be you know unimportant and non-existent. Well, it's kind of one of those things too, where sure. like even the even the big events, you know, the PGA, the Ryder Cup, U.S. Open specifically, have almost become unwatchable in and of themselves, even without piff money or without any you know any of this stuff so it's like hey they're driving people away even even when everybody's playing together then mm -hmm. hey let's let's figure that out you know <laughs> you know what i i just i was thinking about it a lot today and you know what i don't think is going to be the thing that just drives people away from golf is losing five yards in 2030 <laughs> <laughs> you know like I, I just i think there's a lot of people doing a, a much a better job of that uh, <laughs> than than that rule change would oh guys i'm gonna tap out of here I, I i i'm gonna tease i think the big guy uh might be stepping in to bring some of his uh you know classic uh randyisms so i'm hopeful that maybe he'll be able to, to maybe we'll he'll be able to pick up somewhere i left off but i i think you know I always thought when this shit started to go down, at least it's interesting. Like at least it's sort of a gives us shit to talk about. And I think that's been true for a lot of this year, but I'm, I'm kind of exhausted by just the, the swings of this. And I just feel the way that it's turned off so many people who don't follow this, like on a minute to minute basis, like they do. And I just, I'm concerned that that is going to be a, a stain on like not just like the stain on the game from the honor system of it, but like when baseball went on strike in what was it ninety four, it, it took so long for people to like get over that and come back to the game. I just worry that that's the future for golf in some ways. That somebody's going to be like, man, I have screw this. I'm not going to watch this shit anymore for a while. I'm just so annoyed by the greed of it. And w will it take like a tiger type figure to bring them back? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, but maybe that hopefully that's Ludwig TC. But I, I just feel. <laughs> I feel like it's teetering on the knife's edge of, hey man, like fuck you guys, like fuck. Like, why should I, I? Why should I care about this? I got so much better things to do, and and football is so much, you know, more compelling on a week to week basis. That's just my I, concern. I, and dude, I, I I wish the people in charge, whoever that may be, of any organization, like felt that urgency. I just don't think no. they do. I think their heads are still in the sand. But uh, I don't know. Many people are saying Ram is running from Ludwig. I heard that a lot today. TC, really? So, huh. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I had a lot of sources telling me that. So interesting. interesting. All right, Kev, you, Kev. you gave us seven great innings. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can get a six out save from the big guy. Uh, I'm in a big baseball <laughs> mood if we can. So, I feel uh, like it was, it, it's kind of a uh, I'm an, uh, Randy. You were you were doing a you were installing a washing machine. That mm. feels kind of apropos for all the, the sports washing that we're talking about here. Your yeah, you could. You could launder, you can launder whatever you want in a washing machine. That's true, TC. Uh, listen, washing machine, washing machine, shockingly easy to install. You just hook up the cold water, you hook up the hot water. I mean, that's pretty, pretty much it. it Got to plug it in. Yeah, yeah. we rocked them. If I dryer do say vents, so myself. those are hard. Getting the yeah. Gold, yeah. The, like the aluminum thing around the dryer, that that can be kind of challenging. Aluminum. I have to say, guys, I have no idea what we've been talking about. I said in our private chat, I'm sure you don't need me. I don't know what you want from it's me, Grant but Thornton, I am man. here. Let's, we're talking I am Grant here. Thornton. Yeah. Randy, will you just give us the biggest dose of like cynicism that we can <laughs> yeah, possibly I stomach? You I think this is 99. Your, Come this is your time. You could use it however you like. Todd Coffee. Yeah, big print. Got a big in. platform. Whatever you whatever you want to say. What would you no, say that's... to the governing bodies right now, Randy? Oh, no, that's too much pressure. Where's Jimmy Dunn? Have you guys talked about Jimmy Dunn? Where's Jimmy no. Dunn? 
We have not. Where are these? Where are these people that negotiated the June sixth uh, proposed framework agreement? Why are we not hearing from them? Was this part of the plan? I, I just don't get it. I don't get anything. I. I don't know. I'm sure there are a bunch of people in Spain that are going to like be super pumped to watch John Rom play every week. I, I will. This is going to shock you guys. I will not be tuning in to live. I don't think. I don't think like Phil didn't get me there. Rom certainly isn't going to get me there. Um, I, is this just a means to an end? I it just. I, I don't know what to think, guys. I, I need. I need a little help. I need a little help here. I feel like. Uh, I feel like you've had a kind of not so quiet vendetta against rom for a long time there's got to be a part of you that just was eating rom stink? Up today. Ran, rom randy stinks. and the fawns exactly. uh, listen i never rom just never quite did it for me i i think you know he's just a big burly guy he's not the most graceful golf swing like i, I never have like particularly enjoyed watching him play golf winning the masters really was a a dent in my rom stinks uh <laughs> argument <laughs> But yeah, I I don't know. It just feels like, all right, dude, sure. Go, go play some like meaningless golf on the CW. I, I I just, I don't know. Does anybody know what's going on? Who's in charge? Who, who really has like an end goal in mind? I I just, Brandy wants to talk to the manager. Yeah. My biggest takeaway is like, who, who's the adult who knows what is going on anywhere? Because I don't see it. I think it might be Yasser. Which he sounds, sounds like pretty it. busy. Like I, he's, he's like, he, no, I know. He's yeah. like, hey, like, like, listen, you guys are old, old enough to, like, you know, you're supposed to be in high school. You guys can take care of yourselves. Like, you don't need me around all the time. You got your driver's license. I feel like but, we you know, we don't say this enough that like this is not Yasser's full time job. Like he may he <laughs> manages close. what what the eight hundred billion like dollar uh, of fund. Time. Like this is Yasser's fantasy football team. Can we just get my guy an Augusta membership? Like, is that <laughs> right. all he really wants? Exactly. We could have avoided all of this. Uh, yeah, he I don't is know. The I'm governor sure of the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. He's the chairman of Saudi Aramco. Uh, he's the chairman of Al Halal and the chairman of Newcastle United. So his like the, you know, whatever the chairman of Pit, of of Live Golf doesn't make his top five jobs that he has. Well, and then all the all the umbrella companies that they have. You know, investments in you know it's- so forgive me again this is where i'm like I, I apologize i have not watched the first 58 minutes uh tc i'm sure we've gone in on jay monahan we i don't we, even think we need to anymore we like, simply do not know what he's doing it's like kicking a dead dog <laughs> we don't know what he has um, i i think tc maybe yasser says he are the manager is that is that the situation we find a ourselves little bit in? yeah or he's I, trying I, to say you know what like i'm I think I'm the manager or I'm the managing director. We don't know who the manager is. I need to hire a manager. Randy, let, just, me, let me ask you this. Yeah. If, you know, you're, okay. you're, a, you're an influential golf influencer. Of course. Right? Of course. Yeah. Of you course. go back home for, for Christmas, Thanksgiving. Somebody asks you like, Randy, please, your uncle asks you, Hey, Randy, what should I, what do I, I don't know what I should do. Should I be watching golf? How should I feel about all of this? What are, what are you, what are you telling that person earnestly? I, you know, it's like, I, I think the first question is like, do you, do you like golf? Do you like watching golf? Is that something you do now? And I think we just go from there. I, here's, here's the thing that I don't get. And it was going to lead in my point. So DJ, good, good question. What, what I will acknowledge, there are a lot of smart people, I think, involved in all of this from like every angle, people we probably don't even know about. I, I think there are certainly smart people and maybe KVV touched upon this. I just can't shake this feeling of, I, I think perhaps there's a blind spot or a, um, j- just a sense of like taking a golf audience for granted where this just turned like, guys, it's been no big secret, but like, I haven't given a shit about men's pro golf what? in a while. What? And I just feel like, I just feel like I, I hope the people in charge recognize the, the very real fact that this is going to turn a lot of people off and live might win. I don't really know what win means. Like is live going to exist in two years? Is it, 
is is rom like is this all a means to just a big coming together and i did catch kvv talking about the baseball strike but that's kind of where my mind is at is like guys this is like really really off-putting like icky you know icky, icky, icky. nobody likes a public labor dispute and when, when it's when it's this just greedy and over um overcompensate like the, the the market values don't make sense i just think there's a real risk of like people are like why am i watching golf again outside of the four majors and i i think that's you know looking two three years down the road i i just don't know what's going to change or what's going to be the catalyst maybe it's this big global tour but it's like why am i why am I tuning in to watch the Italian Open on some random July after? Like, what what's different about that than that would be the what we have on the PGA Tour now? I, I just don't see how you're going to draw a bunch of new eyeballs to this sport. Um, it's it's a niche sport. It's it's not for everybody, and I think that's part of the charm. And so I, I I'm just very confused. I have no answers. I just have a lot of questions. That's where that's where I keep coming back to as well is like nobody wants to hear this and maybe this is small thinking but you know maybe golf was only supposed to be like this big maybe it's not supposed to be this big maybe it's not right. supposed to be the NFL right maybe it's Tiger, maybe it's Tiger you know? messed a lot up right it was too much too fast everyone's doing a land grab and now like the tide's starting to go out and everyone's just claw like these smart people that you're referring to Randy are like smart at extracting what they can out of the professional game like sure namely agents right i mean that have just made millions and millions of dollars out of the piff uh just from getting their guys to convert and like it again just leaves all the fans on the outside just sitting here like what did you guys do like sure you all got paid and like everybody pulled up the ladder behind them on the way like the ladders that were that were laid by the many people that that played the game before you and built the structure of this uh everybody pulled up the ladder and now I don't know what the how to finish that analogy, but I know it's not good. Let, let me ask you guys this question. This is not rhetorical. I, I would like an answer for this. <laughs> Kevin and I were talking about this earlier. I think he's working on writing something that will probably be up tomorrow or in the, in the coming days uh, to this effect. He kind of teased it at the beginning of the podcast. But there's all these like little micro decisions that have gone on over the last four years, right? Or maybe even bigger than micro decisions, TZ, maybe macro decisions. And let's say each one of those has like a winner and a loser right when was the last time the the fans were not a loser in one of these discussions like truly what was the last good thing that happened for just fans of watching golf on on tv but that's where okay, let me let me jump in here because dj i totally agree with you but it's like i i i get self-conscious because like i y'all have made me watch some live golf stuff like if if that's the future of the television product like i'm good i i don't need any of that but maybe You're a, a lot of people guy? like that well maybe a lot of people like that maybe i'm out of touch with what's hip and popular and cool and that certainly well, that's, could be no they you are because the ratings there, yeah. were so big that yeah, they didn't sure. want to share them because they didn't want other <laughs> you know tours to feel bad <laughs> yeah it would have yeah. embarrassed other tours <laughs> who's the rules, rules guy we're growing the game. We're we're having fun. Slugger White guys no, are the other, no, the other guy that was. Uh, we'll have to look it up. Here's I'll golf's big problem. Golf's big problem is at the end of the day, it's fucking golf, right? Yes. And like that's inherently, it's not cool. You know, when I was working, people would watch make it louder. Sauce. But what if you make it a lot louder? They they might know my buddy Dave Trudell, who I worked for up at Boyne, and I'll never forget what he told me. He's like, you know, like there are like golf. There are so many douchebags in golf. And I'm like, I've never gotten that out of my mind. He's exactly right. People who play, people who watch, people who everything. It's like golf is just inherently, it's not cool. And yeah. so, yes, there is a cap on like how popular this game can be because it's not cool. And it's played it by like gonna, inherently you've not never cool seen, people. And you've it's never run seen by those not hype cool videos? people. Those live hype videos? You've never seen those watched clearly? by not cool people. Like I'm not cool. So I'm like, who is this market you're you're catering to? I it's it so was, stupid. It's it was so about to be cool, and then the dome fell down, and then we got Tony, that going on. Tony Zerpoli. <laughs> Tony Zerpoli. Yeah. Zerpoli. Tony Zerpoli. If he's involved, getting him and Rom out there one on one would be would be good stuff. But I don't know, man. I, I think twenty I think. Randy, we said it before you came on, but I, I think if there's a, a case for optimism, I think it's that the next year sucks outside of the majors. 
and maybe things come back together. And I think to your entire point, it's just going to be fascinating to see like who's the left at that point. Yeah, right. Like who's, that, I who's, think that's where I'm like, still there. Okay, watching. The, like, yeah, I, I think like the big carrot in everybody's mind is like, well, we're going to bring everybody back together. And it's like, well, cool. Like we've had that man. And, and that wasn't yeah. that popular. Like what, <laughs> what's the plan? And I just don't know anybody who has like a real plan. And my thing is you don't, I guess where I would check out is like, I wouldn't have a plan either. I, I would like, let's, let's, let's make this sustainable. Let's let like, let's make golf as self-sustainable as possible because growing the purses, like that's where I'm, uh, I don't know. Well, it's, it's stuff that they keep, you know, like, like goes back to the JT thing from we're talking about all year, last year, like confusing the purse size for the product right and and like we're supposed to care about that i think per, you know you want to talk about the product i'll tell you why rom left a because the, the app, app the of course app is yeah. terrible <laughs> I, I would have paid i would have paid a hundred thousand dollars today to have rom come on fox news and say simply it came down to one thing it was the app i just i couldn't i couldn't follow this any had, longer listen the app's getting better i'll give him that and then b pace of play rom hates slow play and they won't enforce it. And I know that pissed them off. You see, I, I think I, that's a great point. I, I think there's a ton you could do at the margins to like make pro golf more fun you gotta for start players, right? more sustainable. Solly, we've talked about it ad nauseum. Like MLB, the most what I would think this like staunchly conservative organization has radically changed the game of baseball with, with a pitch clock. And for the tour not to even like they're just like we we can't do it guys we we can't do it like we how are we supposed to how are we supposed to improve this tv product it it just is so naive to me you know how bleak yeah. it is when major league baseball is just running circles around you <laughs> exactly like what are we doing the progressive luminaries at major league baseball i i'll tell I, you what we need we need the acorn group big randall stevenson and the gang to to pop <laughs> pop their heads in start 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 poking around looking for some efficiencies. I'll tell you uh, what is going to be a huge bummer if if we are still allegedly on the Rom to live topic was again this was like a kind of a, a stunner to me. I feel like all right, yes, Kepka won the PGA. He almost won the Masters. Phil almost won the Masters this year. Still, we don't. We should probably do a whole podcast looking back on that. But like it kind of shocked me when I did go back and look at the whole all of the whole realm of professional golf everybody's strokes gained for their entire year and lived didn't have a single guy in the top 30 over the last 12 months across all events was like, Whoa, man, we talked about a year and a half ago. Like, are these guys going to stay sharp enough, you know, competing in this format? And I would say that's a resounding, like, no for the top players that went and that I don't see Rom falling back. With the exception but, of Brooks who won the PGA. Like he won the, he won the uh, major, but like his, his live golf record was not very yeah. good this year. Like his, again, his, I bet his PGA tour record was not that good either. He, I was like, gonna, he's, I was he's an outlier. Say, yeah. He's an outlier. And he's the number one rated live player uh, uh, over the last 12 months. Obviously Rom will now be, he's the number three ranked player uh, over that time period. But like, that's just something again, worth watching. I didn't see Cam Smith falling off. I mean, Cam Smith was top five in the world coming off an open championship and he has fallen completely off over the last year. And I, Really, really, really hope we don't see that out of Rom. I don't think we will, but like all of them have gone backwards. Uh, and that's, you know, that would be quite a bummer if that ends up being the case. Let me ask you guys this. Do you think there's a, a scenario in which, say it's 10, 15, 30 years down the line, that we look at Rom as like a transformational figure or like a, a, a catalyst for, you know what? Rom was brave enough to take this massive bag of money and bring everybody back to the table. Like, you think there's a, a world in which we come to that conclusion? What would the, like the metaphor there be of like the, the Rory's, the Cantleys, the Speeds, the Tigers that have like done all of the work on it, and Rom just swoops in and jumps sides and takes the money, weakens their position on absolutely everything. And uh, gets viewed as the hero on that one. I don't know. I don't have anything that comes to mind off the top of my head. Man. Well, it, well, it's just you know. It's, I mean, forces them to make a decision. Forces them to to align and figure out where their interests lie and where they can bring them together. I don't know. I feel like there's a certain like you know. Rom must have felt some sort of like he's 
he's had a chip on his shoulder, right? He felt like there, there either wasn't a big enough spot for him at the table or he feels diminished or, you know, I don't know what his relationship is with Tiger, but like, it was weird tonight. Like Tiger, Tiger tweets that, that memo or that letter that was sent out on December 1st, like six yeah, days that was, ago. Like, that was a like, sincere, a, a real big cool man on. Yeah. That was on not that it. one. Yeah. You know, and it, it's like, Hey, it's at some point, like, you know, we're gonna need to hear oh, from okay. a show United Front. Guys. Like, because it seems like the like the board and like I mean the players, like it it sounds like the top players can't even figure out what to agree on anymore, much less guys at yeah. different, you know, stratas of uh, you know uh, uh, again of organization. Tiger uh, you, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 what are you say? No, I was just gonna say Tiger reeks of like Hey, did, did you guys see Michael Jordan when he owned the Washington Wizards? Like, do, do we want him in like an administrative decision making role? I don't know about that. It's, I, yeah, I thought the same. Right? I you haven't said that out loud, well. but that's you no. Know. Like, why? Why do like Tiger's a phenomenal golfer? But is he like? I don't know if I want to trust him to thread this needle. It's kind of what the, I come the, back to with all these guys. Like, what are what are the odds that you're just like best in the world at at genius wildly at different things? <laughs> <laughs> but and that's uh, that's what takes me you guys like cody i know you're throw me off whenever you need but like where where's jimmy dunn where's ed hurley where, where are these like masters of the universe negotiators who gave us the june 6th agreement that rory i saw cited as like a big changing point and and what led to rom making this decision today like those guys have no accountability to the public and it's just very very um something's just it stinks i, well, I think I just, they neutered him i mean they, were, they, they they basically took their negotiating power away right through whatever the new agreement is on the board of like you can't you must inform like you, we have to be involved in the process right they're like they just were like you guys are not negotiating on behalf but, of us but at that point like how do you keep the commissioner in place like like how can you that's been my whole thing for the last few months of like how can he do that the players all all are vehemently aligned, like totally aligned, vehemently against Jay and Ed and Jimmy just going off the reservation and doing this unbeknownst to most of the board. And then you just keep the, like there's no accountability whatsoever. You just keep right. the guy in place and like, Mane and cool, you know what? Like, you know what? He hasn't done a great job. We don't agree with a lot of the decisions he's made but we're going to let him dictate the future of this organization and the future of professional golf. Like what fucking planet are we living on? Like that's, that's insane. And the other one, hey, if I may, guys. you're exactly right, TC. And that brings me back to Rory is like, well, what's he doing? Like I keep waiting for Rory to make a public out. Like Rory, what do you want? Right. Like how how in the wake of June 6th was he not leading, beating the drum, new leadership like I, I and I guess that's part of the problem. We have like I have no idea how the player run PGA Tour actually operates because I have no idea how they keep leadership in place after that. But uh, like Rory, like what are we doing, bud? You, you know, I, like he's not covering himself in glory and all this. I, I just don't. Nobody looks good. Nobody. Can I, the, my hypothesis for that, Randy, and this is totally my guess, is I feel like a lot of the the discord or the disagreements or the kind of just like general indigestion from all of these guys is like trying to save a system that is impossible in this new yeah. like world, right? Where I feel like a lot of what's driving these guys crazy is trying to make sure that you know the the players. 51 to 200 are still you know are, are still earning a like very very exceptional wage for being one of the top 200 golfers out of 100 million on the planet right and i i almost feel like if when you just said like rory what do you want he would never do this i don't think but like if he was to come out and just say like listen it's a new world there's gonna be 40 golfers and we're just gonna blow everything up and cater it towards them i mean he would get obliterated by fellow players right like that's not gonna happen but that's probably what is gonna end up happening just through like sheer market forces anyways right and yeah, if anything he's the mistakes he's made is like trying to cater to the mules too much without them even realizing yeah. 
And Somebody, like that's a, a different person might have handled that very differently yeah. and cut them out a lot more than they got cut out. I'm just tired, too, of like the people who say, oh, who's going to replace Jay or who's going to replace? It's like a 15 to $20 million a year job. Like, so, you know, I think you can find somebody, <laughs> even, even somebody in the organization. It's so to hard to hire right now. Basis <laughs> and figure out, right get, a, get a few, you know, get a few players who, you know, you feel like are, are relatively reputable and have their ear and you know it's just i don't know it's crazy it's like they're paying allen and company they're, they're paying all this money to all these different people and they're then they're not getting anything for it it's crazy there's an si know. article um is it written by ai or no i'll uh, i'll ramble here evening gentlemen uh oh, i do think the fact that rory is stepping down from the board knowing that he was overly protective of course eventually replaced by uh young jordan spieth and then with the additional seat of tiger in there it seems like there is like there is one person there that was kind of looking for rank and file looking out for them big time being rory with Cantley, who already had that seat, looking out for the stars and trying to get their bag. Now it seems to be kind of replaced to Tiger and Cantley and Spieth it, kind of forming an alliance to get the bag for the stars. Now rank and file are truly fucked. Hearing you say that, Cody, and sorry, this gets back to what you said earlier about like the, the tides going out. In what world is Patrick Cantley a star? Like a star of what? Like what? What does he think he? What? What is? What is he worth? What? What does he move the needle on? Any? Anywhere, Randy, I, I heard he was gallivanting around Manhattan. <laughs> Patrick uh, Cantlay is such holy. a non-factor in like in life, right? Like I get it. He's a good. He's a very good PGA golfer, but he's not even close to relevant. Like in my mind, and I'm a and I'm I've paid attention to golf, relatively speaking, like pr like a lot the last five years like, the guy's nothing i i don't get it i i i simply do these guys somehow sense that this is the the time they have to cash in and then it's all gonna go away i i, I don't know the again i i have no answers i, I just I think part of the every question Cantlay, brings up a new question can't lay weirdly seems better qualified than a lot of these other guys to He's enough He's, of a sociopath that it might, it might yeah, just work. Yeah, he seems work. pretty pretty intelligent, I think. But it's just like, does that matter if everybody disagrees with him? You know? Yeah. I I I, I think that we need to not worry if people disagree with him anymore. If we're talking about like the membership as a whole. Right? Because that's like what has led to this mess. Right? Yeah. I, I think so. It's just we. It, it's weird, man. Like this is not going to be a sexy take but a lot of it is what we have been saying for four years which is just like it's a broken model that doesn't work right. anymore and so if you're if you're jay and i know post <laughs> june 6th we're talking about a totally different situation and i'm i'm heading that one off at the past but pre-june 6th you're kind of operating within this different world where you have to look out for the interests of all these different members and like you're just in a in an old ass model that is ripe for being taken over right and now it's time to totally rebuild what that model is but they can't really do that on the fly while they're kind of being taken over while they're trying to start a new company while they've got other influencers coming in and they've got other you know they've got other players jumping from league to league it's just like it's just a fucking giant mess and it, they're kind of trying to build the plane as they're flying it it's just i don't know i'm i'm not envious of of any of the uh the work that has to be done on the pj tour side but that's where i go back to like today being good for all that of like all right totally. well, good luck fucking talking yeah. about yeah 75th on the fedex cup list yeah, not like none of that matters <laughs> it if, does not exactly yeah i don't know um so you know uh, the one good thing about the fucking tour dj what you're just talking about the, the the tour is the one now that turned around and went to tournament directors and were like Yo, all this charity money that like everybody feels good around here about, you guys actually need to give us more than that. Like, don't forget about the women and the for children. the players. I think yeah. it's more complicated than that. Like, yes, yes, I, I, you know, maybe the charity money is, but I think some of it is trying to squeeze 
some of these host organizations that have been running tournaments, there's some weak ones that are highly inefficient and they're trying to step their game up a little bit too and say, Hey, you know what? Like the tour at all levels has to get more efficient here. So like you guys are a part of the machine that, that like that's on you guys as well. Just reading through this, this sports illustrated thing, Michael Rosenberg wrote it, you know, the AI comment, that was probably a cheap shot. He's a good journalist. <laughs> he is. Um, it says last summer after the PGA tour and Saudi Arabia's public investment fund announced their framework agreement, PIF indicated a willingness to fund a $1 billion equalization pool for PGA tour players. That sounds like reparations to me who turned you know, down live offers Chess and Hadley uh, before the, the framework agreement, people familiar with the discussions tell sports Illustrated that number wasn't final. Nothing was final, obviously, but that's where this was headed. A $1 billion equalization pool on top of a $2 billion PIF investment in the PGA tour. I believe the guy, whoever runs Feels the like a uh, pretty good deal. When I when I mentioned this, Kelly Craft could buy with that. When I mentioned this, both on the pod and on Twitter, I believe the Living It Up Pod Twitter account told me to fuck off with that. That there's no way there'd be an equalization. Uh, maybe 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 we knew something about that while that was happening, huh? It's crazy how that worked. God, I bet Chris Stroud would hate reparations. <laughs> uh, can you imagine <laughs> the bitchiness around an equalization fund? Like, oh, holy sick. fuck, that would be, you people are mad with the pip. Like, <laughs> you know how hard it would be to split up a billion dollars? <laughs> I would just be like, yo, Tiger, you get like 300 million, 400 million. T Tiger, you take whatever you feel comfortable with and we'll figure <laughs> out the rest. As much as if you there can is carry. any. Yeah, yeah. As, if, as much as you can fit in this bag, you could take. And that's what, so if I can change the subject a little bit, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just thinking about like the young people in my life. I have a couple nephews. TC, <laughs> you have sons. Solly, you, you have a kid, although she doesn't watch golf yet. Like, like what? She does what, actually. I was at Solly's house last week. She loves <laughs> just laughing at the hero. Yeah. What she possibly? <laughs> what possibly could get like kids? YouTube like golf. where they're talking about pro golf at school. Like that's what I come back no. to. Like golf no. is an inherently no. not cool. So there's just like such a clear ceiling on all of this, in my opinion. Dude, like, that's like, where like people do people like like your nephew's age, like look up to like the good, good guys. Like they like they look up to the YouTube golfers. When we were growing up, that was not an option. We couldn't just go log on online and just like watch people play cool golf courses, people that we like. Like the option was to watch pro golf. And that's not what the kids these days, that's watching, not what their options are. Out here watching Jeff Slubin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, watch Omar, Tom Landry just sweat up his dockers on a weekly basis. Like, there's Man, other this options. rules. Why are other kids not watching this? <laughs> right? Tommy, like, this is Tommy so cool. tolls. It's it's John over. Houston, guys. John, John Houston, Houston was 23 <laughs> under this weekend. Did you see that? That's how Randy and I got into. He the seems game. like that a nice a guy. He seems like a really drug. good guy. Steve Flesh. Yeah. You know, you know what's Northern cooler Kentucky. than Steve Flesh? Exactly. I, that's where I'm just like, I don't know what the end the end plan is because like tiger tiger was about like as big of a unicorn as you could ever get in this sport and they fucked it all up fucked it all up they they haven't capitalized but but part of that's like i don't know where you go from tiger right like like where are you supposed to go from there i i don't know i i don't know and maybe <laughs> listen maybe the live folks have all the ideas maybe they've won like i'm i'm ready to admit anything i i truly do not care I'm just fascinated to see what happens. I, uh, long, I've, long I've referenced story short, it, it, Sorry, it sounds like the, the like the the gist of the SI article is that Cantlay formed an alliance with the Cat, Jordan, and you know Rain Group and some of the other advisors coming in, and and that that could be kind of the 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 mule schism there. A lot of that's leaking out, or a lot of that's percolating across the organization. And that's where the backlash is. And my question there is like this whole six votes. Hey, we're going to vote as a block. Like what happens if they, they just straight up can't get to an agreement on anything? Like that's, that's if like Peter Malnati and Webb Simpson are, and Charlie Hoffman are like, you know what? We vehemently fundamentally disagree with you. Like, like what do you, what do you do? Just, just in perpetuity, not, Peace. not vote. We tried. That, well, no, I guess we tried, guys. We're gonna go. We're gonna go do this global tour yeah. thing. We tried. We we did everything possible to, to do this with you guys, and we cannot. 
cannot support you anymore. Yeah, I, I think if there's people voting that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess what well, it's hard to know, like without knowing what the deals are that are on the table that they could they could take, right? But it, it really seems like with today's announcement, just kind of like tying it full circle is. I don't know if you say no to that, if you try to cut these guys out or something like that, it just really seems like you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Has, has our guy Bob Ball chimed in yet out in Portland? That's a good question. I don't know. Randy, I know you don't want to talk about this, but this isn't just specific to men. I mean, the, I was gonna ask. the oh, LPGA no. LET merger vote was called off specifically because there is a deal put forth by PIF. Uh, right. For people who are interested, yeah, we're going to talk you about start... this tomorrow. Okay, in, there you go. We're doing an LPGA podcast. Tomorrow it'll come out next week. We'll run down all of this, but this is not just specific to men's golf. This is affecting women's golf as well. For sure. Yeah. We've, we've heard, you know, maybe the piff with the LET and <laughs> Susie Whaley as, at the head, like there could be a global women's tour coming too, which again, okay. But what I, I don't begrudge the rest of the world wanting like the best professional golfers to come and play in their country. Like I, I totally, totally get that. That, that is very reasonable to me. I, I guess I just struggle with how they're ever going to match up the expenses and the costs to like what this vision is and, and what's going to make it a more enticing product for the viewer I, is there going to be a benefactor to golf is the question right is it yeah is right it sugar daddy golf like that's what like live adelaide was a smashing success that's sugar daddy golf like the economics of that are taken care of by uh it, you know prince muhammad bin salman like that's how that and, works. and the lpj is already more of a global tour so i actually think they're positioned well to you know create a european swing create a you know go down to south africa whatever australia would be a, a great stop for a few weeks i i have no problems with any of that but i i just don't okay we we have this global tour men's women's side like five ten years aren't we going to be dealing with the same exact problems like the broadcast sucks people aren't really with the ratings stay like I, I i just don't understand what the end goal is with all of this except to get yasser a, a membership at augusta like let's just get him the membership it's so okay? funny too that they're doing all this while at the same time like destroying all this in, like intrinsic value right like yeah. they're turning people off they're they're you know like they're just like people are fleeing ratings that's are, right that's yeah. what i keep coming back to is you know I'm, I'm sure i've said this on the pod apologies if i have but the like the biggest asset that the pj tour has is not any of these individual players other than tiger rory spieth phil a couple a couple of guys that like are have been the you know oh my god i gotta get home and turn on the tv type of guys there's not that many of them the biggest asset that they have is just that it's on CBS or NBC yes. at three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. People don't really give a fuck about anything other than that. And they kind of just want to have that muscle memory. I've used this example many times internally and maybe on here, but like people do the same thing with NCIS, right? They, they love watching NCIS at a certain time on whatever night it's on. Shout out to our guy, Brian Dietzen, of course. <laughs> If if Brian Dietz and the medical examiner is going to say, you know what, guys, I'm actually I know you love this show. It's a big part of your routine again on whatever night it's on. Uh, I'm actually going to leave. I'm going to start my own show over here on this other streaming platform. I can't wait to see you guys there. I can't wait to upend your habits and have you come check it out. I just really don't think there's that many people going to do that. And I feel the same way about pro golf. It's like, yeah, I'll watch it. That sounds sweet, man. If you guys are in Australia or you're in Japan or you're in Ireland or you're in South Africa or wherever, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to love to look at the stats and see who did what. There's probably another, you know, couple hundred thousand people that feel the same way that I do. Are there 20 million people that feel that way <laughs> like, no dude what are we talking about what's the what's the upside of this it's it's golf to your point randy it's just fucking it's golf. golf it's and golf, it's and yeah. like if they are doing that that's it's never gonna look sexy i'm it's a never. massive proponent of world tour 
play more in Australia, play more in, you know, the British Europe. Isles, all so that, like European golfers. But it's, you know, but it's one of those things where the more you play in Australia, like you get, those time zones get tricky, right? The TV yeah, product gets tricky. For sure. uh, the schedule gets tricky. Like, you know, there's a lot of challenges. And that's where I do think there's certain elements Sponsor, of sponsorship gets tricky. Just yeah. Taxes. Taxes. Yeah. Like taxes with live, crazy. you know, where it's, it's like, yo, like I get the reason why the PGA Tour looks the way it does and looks yeah. as unimaginative as it does. But that doesn't mean that. You know, but but also I do think there's ways that they can, you know, going back to what we talked about with PGL three years ago, right? It's like they're part of the reason that they that like that proposal was so positive, I think, was was because you're you're drawn from like worldwide marketing budgets, right? You know, Coca Cola is the out like like companies that don't really want to sponsor or spend a bunch of money in golf right now because it's so siloed in individual markets. You know, but but I like I, I think I think F one is a lot easier to market across the world because it's an hour and a half race or a two hour thing and you on can one figure day. out on yeah. one day and you know, granted you got qualifying, but like on one day sure. and you can you can fit that into a certain window or time the race up or whatever where golf's not as malleable. And I think that's probably part of the reason why Liv looks the way it does with forty eight players in the shotgun start and you know, a four hour window and, you know, kind of easily digestible like that. Right. The, the other part, I know we're, I know we're going in circles here, but like the other part, Randy, just to continue kind of lifting up your point here is let's say that we somehow, you know, get a product that is just has the potential to draw all these people in. We're still not even talking about the majors. Like that's a whole other thing. We're not even talking about the most important events still. That's exactly <laughs> They're right. They're totally on a different page. And it's just, yeah, I, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I, don't, I know. don't think we've talked honestly enough about how, again, we were enormous fans of like this extremely well put together, like plan for the future of professional golf that had a, almost everything thought of, had media buyers ready to like buy up the ad spots, had the enterprise value just kind of needed to be checked on by, uh, you know, looked at by the PGA tour and how hard the saudis just leroy jenkins this thing like literally just took the plan and instead of like the following the one guiding north star of like we need the top 48 guys it was like nah we're just gonna get whoever we can get and starve out the golf C world in. and this is how we've ended up here like it we have not Andy ogletree properly reflected on that like that was hey. an outrageous move leroy <laughs> jenkins Andy's worked his ass off, TC. A little respect. He has. He has. You're like, all right, we've we're an hour and a half into this thing. Can we talk about the trades? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to go. I'm, I'm serious, dude. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, you've got all right. You got three. Got Uline and Taylor Gooch. Cody, now, cut me. Cut me, Cody. I got <laughs> nothing. Go. Go. You can't go. I got nothing for, for this. all three teams for for the goats smash in the aces all both of those guys play for all three of those teams already and then like the harold varner trade today i don't know i just i don't i don't quite get it like i don't i don't understand what the range goats are doing and i don't understand what your cliques are doing they're just sitting on their hands they're not doing anything is, wait, does rom have a new team or is he taking over the cliques because you were trying a great to tell me question I, I i thought he was going to take over the cliques <laughs> personally we cannot know these things. i think that it sounds like they may they may start two new teams. Do you think there's anything to these rumors or about Hatton or about Big Tone? Hatton, sure, no Hatton. Everybody no. should go. Why doesn't everybody go? That's what I don't get. Following the logic of everything I laid out in the like whatever the second third of this podcast, where it's like they're probably going to come back together anyways. You know, for free this money year's kind of a wash. You might as well. I don't know that they're going to offer that many contracts to people, but I guess they're playing for big ass purses. I and was gonna say, to well, at some point. point, like, doesn't like I feel like Yasser almost doesn't need to write big checks, right? Yeah, right. He like can he got scoop the... up these guys that are over there. He can get Duffner and fucking Stroud and the rest of the knuckleheads that are over there. No, they gotta qualify, dog. That's a that's their whole way into world ranking points. God, Rory should just go. Rory should just go beat these be. guys. For why, a do, year. why doesn't Max go? Why? You know, I'm sure Max could get what seventy five million. Well, no, they're not. Why would they? You know, again, it all follows the assumption that like 
they're they're not trying to be their own breakaway thing and they're just trying to come back together anyways but like even just getting into the events just getting onto a team even with no signing bonus you're playing for way but you're playing for 20 million dollars every week yeah that's that's the gooch plan right exactly who will be quote Uh, the next gooch tc rom did help us in one way like if we ever want to flip like you can just do it no matter what you said you can just go you can just flip at the end yeah just flip over and Totally. Wait, what do you guys think, Rob? TC, it, you're right, though. I, I just realized how the fuck did Kepka and Gooch end up on the same team? They're the it's best crazy. two players in the league. I know. And, and, and the, you got, and then you they got allowed Kodrak. this trade. Bubba said, I believe, to uh, who was that to Rappaport today? Like, this yeah, trade makes a lot of sense. DM it's me. a culture fit. Yeah, it's a culture yeah. fit, I think. <laughs> how many you got? Yeah. And they got GMAC now. I mean, GMAC's terrible, but like, you know, you got Kokrak. I mean, Smash. I think, yeah, they were up against the cap limit. That's why they had to sign uh, GMAC, I'm guessing. But I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people in the comments here saying that Adam Scott's going to go to the Rippers. Sweet. Mm. Go for uh, it, man. Okay, he's on He's on the board what, of PGA Tour. That'd be tough. Yeah. What do you guys <laughs> think? Uh, yeah, Rom would pack, Delaware, right? too. Pack, yeah. Sorry. What do you guys think of uh, uh, Rom's team name's going to be? I thought people were floating it? Los Toros. Los Toros, whatever we think it is, just Los Carniceros. Divide it by like ten degrees of dumbness, and I'm sure that'll be <laughs> much closer. I tell you, what, really burn it all down. Omar, you're resty. Los Tapas, solo third right now. Champions. Tour. All right, School. that'll that'll do it. That's it. The Omar, you're resty part of the show is is time. It's time. Hold on, I got one guys. Thing. How is this Blocky is not, not prominently hold, hold. involved yet? Took I just want to point mouth. this out. That live, they tried to do a, a funny thing on social and put out, you know, this word. They unfortunately they spelt John's first name wrong. So when you found it, it just they just couldn't help themselves. Yeah, but they didn't spell John Doe wrong. <laughs> True. So that's interesting. Second, uh, I I think everybody saw this and they're like, oh, ha ha ha! He what? called it. What? What? Uh, for, for those yeah. on the podcast. This was this was Max's tweet. Uh, imagine if Rom announces this in a live golf letterman jacket. Uh, I, I I would say anybody who didn't realize that Max clearly must have seen a <laughs> screenshot of this. Like, no wonder a fucking new league came in and took over. The <laughs> like, good God, guys! I have a I have a little a little pride, and this is the best tweet of the day. Uh, can you do the one picture, the skinny picture of him, just just stand there with his head tilted back? Oh uh, yeah. This one was uh, the the caption that came to mind was, uh, "Hey, my friend over there thinks you're cute." And then <laughs> cuts to <laughs> this is the friend. Oh, oh John! This is man. what, this what is, else we got? Yeah, of course, more Letterman T- love. TC, I'm sure you cover this big night for the Maris School though, with with Brett getting the exclusive. Brett Bear, yeah, yeah. Proud oh, Maris School alum. Sally and I's friend from Burning Tree. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh randy brett bear is is one famous media personality ernie johnson also went to marist i like the ernie. third the third media guy that, that that went to marist that i think blows both of them out of the water david hasselhoff but he got the hoff he got, he got expelled really oh. yeah all right what Cody, do you guys think <laughs> tc you, you must have seen the scott pelly quantum computing 60 minutes segment no i haven't watched it yet i haven't yeah, seen it i'm gonna open god, a bottle of wine Pelly tomorrow in his element i'd live for segments like that. keith or scott uh i always get him never, never i can never of know. course thank you to our friends at <laughs> roback <you>, cody <laughs> <laughs> thank you to everybody tuning in for this special emergency live show uh breaking down the signing of uh, young John Rom to the Live Golf League. Uh, anything else, you guys? I might make the 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 inside out hoodie my calling card. That's like <laughs> the web Randy, band. did you notice that he's wearing his uh, real back hoodie inside out? Currently. Who is Rom? Got, no, no, DC is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it's an analogy. I got that dog inside yeah. me and and outside. He Someone also teased the uh, dog logo even more. The dog logo even more subtle. When you <laughs> <that out. laughs> 
<laughs> he also uh, teased the fact that he played golf with uh, his personal hero. Yeah. We're going to have to hear about that at a, at a different time. Thank you. We're not going to hear about it now. We're going to forget to come back to that. Poor, have we mentioned the poor LPGA? Like, is anybody going to be care about the Grand Thornton starting tomorrow? Like, the poor LPGA cannot catch a break. I, I feel like every time something big is around the corner, we just get this massive live news and it just totally eats up whatever the lpga is doing it's wild that nobody well, you know what we whole have a whole lpga thing. pod tomorrow to that's right dig yeah. in on it and everything I'll, I'll just say this spencer levine uh he was awesome he was uh he's in town he's getting ready for q school next week pga tour q school uh which i think is going to be actually pretty interesting to watch uh they're giving five cards away for the first time is it at forever it's at sawgrass and uh, it's at uh valley course and uh sawgrass country club hmm. um but yeah spencer he was flushing it uh he's got such a positive optimistic outlook on life these days he's, he couldn't have been more gracious I, like they say don't meet your heroes but i was uh i was he, he was awesome it was, oh, it was richard gears in the chat our guy richard gear <laughs> randy <laughs> rg what up boy rg3 <laughs> so all right, so he's ready to get out of here. Cut I, me. Yeah, cut gotta me. cry, baby. <laughs> hey, all right, love you after party. <laughs> Again, everybody, yeah, thanks guys. for tuning in. That's it. Uh, unless there's some more breaking news, but enjoy podcasts through the rest of the year. Then we'll be back with live shows in 2024. Cheers. Crack on.